This channel brings daily updates about the San Francisco 49ers. If I were you, I'd already hit the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell, because there are incredible updates and you wouldn't want to miss them, right? Let's go, San Francisco 49ers, yeah! If you're looking for reasons why the San Francisco 49ers have been one of the best teams in the NFC over the last five years, including two trips to the Super Bowl, tight end George Kittle should be at the top of the list. Kittle, with his athletic ability, physical presence, and playmaking skills, has been one of the team's main pillars. Since his arrival, he has stood out not only as a reliable target for the 49ers quarterbacks, but also as an exceptional blocker, significantly contributing to the team's offensive success. However, if you're looking for reasons why the 49ers haven't been able to overcome the final hurdle and win the sixth Super Bowl in the franchise's history, Kittle's disappearing acts in the postseason should also be considered. Despite his dominant performances in the regular season, Kittle has struggled to maintain the same level of production in the playoffs. This was evident in 2023 when he had just eight receptions for 112 yards and one touchdown in three postseason games, a performance below expectations for a player of his caliber. One of the factors contributing to this drop in performance was an abdominal muscle injury that Kittle suffered, which required surgery following the loss to the Kansas City Chiefs in Super Bowl 58. This injury significantly affected his ability to play at a high level and perform his crucial role in the 49ers offense. Kittle signed a five-year, $75 million contract in 2020, making him the highest paid tight end in the NFL at the time. He is under contract with the 49ers through the 2025 season, when he will be 32 years old. The 49ers' rise to their status as one of the top teams in the NFC has mirrored Kittle's rise to his status as one of the elite tight ends in the league. In his seven seasons, the 49ers have made the playoffs four times, reflecting Kittle's importance to the team. Selected in the fifth round of the 2017 draft, 146th overall pick, Kittle quickly became a fundamental piece of the 49ers' offense. He helped lead the team to the Super Bowl following the 2019 season, which also ended in a loss to the Chiefs. During that campaign, Kittle again had a disappointing playoff performance, with only eight receptions for 71 yards in three games, in contrast to his impressive 85 receptions for 1,053 yards and five touchdowns in the 2019 regular season. With Brandon Ayuk already sitting out OTAs and Kittle also missing them while recovering from surgery, these workouts represent an excellent opportunity for secondary weapons like rookie Ricky Pearsall and newly signed Jawan Jennings to get more reps with the first-team offense. This additional time on the field can be crucial for the development of these players and the depth of the roster, especially considering the importance of having reliable options on offense during the long and grueling NFL season. The 49ers hope that, with Kittle healthy and other key pieces ready to contribute, they can finally overcome the difficulties of previous years and win the long-sought sixth Super Bowl title. Kittle's ability to return to his elite form after surgery will be a determining factor for the team's aspirations in the upcoming season. The San Francisco 49ers continue to restock and bolster their offense by re-signing wide receiver Jawan Jennings to a two-year, $15.4 million contract extension. Jennings, who was on the fast track to being Super Bowl MVP, had the 49ers held on against the Kansas City Chiefs, slots in as the 49ers' current WR3, likely competing with rookie Ricky Pearsall for snaps this upcoming year. Jennings' contract also makes it unlikely the Niners will keep both wideouts, Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel, on the roster next year. Ayuk is reportedly looking to be at the top of the WR contract pecking order, and Debo's contract has an escape clause after this year. With Jennings signing, it becomes clear that the 49ers have probably made a decision regarding quarterback Brock Purdy's second contract. Jennings' contract is only a two-year deal, which gives San Francisco a lot of flexibility as Purdy's inevitable monster extension looms. By keeping Jennings in the fold and drafting several young receivers and more offensive weapons, the 49ers seem to have decided to retool their roster to build around the third-year signal caller and his eventual massive contract extension. 
Having cost-controlled play from receivers like Pearsall and Jacob Cowing will allow the Niners to manage the likely $50 million plus it will take to keep Purdy in the red and gold. Signing Jennings for two years instead of one allows the 49ers to maintain a three-receiver core even when one of the star receivers is likely let go. The Niners shopping both Ayak and Samuel demonstrates how they have already begun preparing the books for Purdy's new extension. San Francisco loading up on receivers is also a sign that head coach Kyle Shanahan may start building around Purdy schematically. Jennings is a fantastic situational receiver, but the 49ers played 11 personnel, three wide receivers, only 41% of the time, ranking fifth lowest in the NFL last year. The slot receiver for the 49ers is an important but not truly valuable position, making Jennings' new contract a bit of a luxury. However, the Niners have shown a willingness to throw more with Purdy, and with the increase in weapons in the passing game, it seems the Niners have begun to trust Purdy more to lead them in all situations by tailoring their offensive weaponry to their quarterback. Overall, the 49ers' offseason approach seems to indicate they have decided to double down on the former Mr. Irrelevant to lead them for a long time. Whether or not this was the right approach remains to be seen. Now it's your time to interact with us, leave in the comments what you thought of the video, and, as usual, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the notification bell. This channel brings daily updates about the San Francisco 49ers. If I were you, I'd already hit the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell, because there are incredible updates and you wouldn't want to miss them, right? Let's go, San Francisco 49ers, yeah! This Memorial Day, Christian McCaffrey showcased his musical talents to honor the United States Armed Forces. The San Francisco 49ers running back played an acoustic version of Zach Bryan's El Dorado, accompanied by his future brother-in-law, pianist Gus Culpo. The song El Dorado holds special significance as McCaffrey teamed up with the Grammy-nominated country music star to support the American military community through music. The choice of this song was not by chance, as both McCaffrey and Brian have strong ties to the military and a deep desire to help those who serve. When the track was released, Brian announced that all profits generated from the song would be donated to McCaffrey's foundation, 23 and Troops. This foundation was created to provide support to active duty U.S. military personnel, veterans, and frontline workers, helping them overcome trauma and PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Before becoming one of country music's fastest rising stars, Zach Bryan served in the United States Navy for eight years. His military experience and personal understanding of the challenges faced by service members brought powerful authenticity to his collaboration with McCaffrey. This personal and professional connection makes their partnership even more significant. McCaffrey's 23 and Troops Foundation focuses on helping active military personnel, veterans, and frontline workers overcome trauma and PTSD. According to the Foundation's website, 23 and Troops aims to bring together cutting-edge treatments in medicine and wellness to assist special operations veterans suffering from the lingering effects of PTSD or brain injury. The Foundation's mission is clear, to provide access to advanced treatments that not only address the symptoms, but also help heal the root causes of the issues faced by those who have given so much to their country. Beyond medical efforts, the Foundation is also dedicated to raising awareness about the daily challenges faced by veterans and their families. McCaffrey and Brian believe that through music and art, it is possible to create a space for healing and understanding, where stories of resilience and overcoming adversity can be shared, inspiring others to seek help and support this vital cause. On Memorial Day, McCaffrey and Copo's performance was not just a display of musical talent, but also a powerful tribute to the sacrifices made by so many. The event served as a reminder of McCaffrey's ongoing commitment to the military community and his desire to make a difference in the lives of those who serve and protect the nation. With the initiative to donate the proceeds from El Dorado to the 23 and Troops Foundation, McCaffrey and Brian hope not only to raise funds, but also to inspire others to get involved and support similar causes. They wish that every note played and every word sung resonates as a symbol of gratitude and recognition for the service and sacrifice of American military personnel. 
This gesture by McCaffrey, playing piano alongside Gus Copo, goes beyond music. It is an act of solidarity and empathy. It is a reminder that the spirit of Memorial Day extends beyond a holiday. It is an opportunity to reflect on the true cost of freedom and how each person can contribute to improving the lives of those who have served the country. The longer the San Francisco 49ers wait, the harder it becomes to finalize Brandon Ayuk's contract extension. This point was driven home on Tuesday when another significant wide receiver deal was announced. Nico Collins and the Houston Texans have agreed to a three-year extension worth an average of $24 million per year. Diana Rossini of The Athletic was the first to report the deal. The headline figures for Collins' contract are substantial. He will earn $72.75 million over three years, with $52 million of that guaranteed. For Ayuk, the Collins deal doesn't change his expectations regarding average annual salary. The 49ers star receiver reportedly aims to surpass the $28 million average that the Detroit Lions agreed to pay a Monterey St. Brown earlier this offseason. However, the guaranteed money component of Collins' contract will likely be of particular interest to Ayuk and his representatives, potentially complicating negotiations for the 49ers. While the full details of Collins' contract, including the specifics of the guaranteed money in terms of skill, salary cap, and injury clauses, have yet to be released, the figure of $52 million in guaranteed money places the 2021 third-round pick among the elite. According to Spotrac, this amount puts Collins in the top 10 among wide receivers for guaranteed money, which is notable given that the 2023 season was his first surpassing 1,000 yards. Prior to his 1,297-yard breakout season, Collins had never reached 500 yards receiving in a single season. Ajax team is therefore in a strong position to demand a guaranteed money total that comfortably surpasses Collins. Ayuk has achieved over 1,000 yards receiving in each of the last two seasons and has never had fewer than 700 yards in any of his four NFL seasons. This consistent performance enhances his bargaining power. Two years ago, the 49ers gave Debo Samuel $58.1 million in guaranteed money following his stellar 2021 campaign, which was also his first 1,000-yard season. Since then, Samuel has not reached four figures in receiving yards.